As an example, let's look at Apple, trying to bring this to life. So Apple started off when it moved into mobile phones down here, created a phone, physical asset, uh, very high marginal costs to, to grow that business, and an enormous risk as well. Apple was moving into a completely new industry. However, if you remember back, what it cleverly did is it invested in a developer community and an app store, which in, attracted it and incentivized other people to create applications that made their core business much more attractive. Now, over time, Apple makes very significant margins on enabling and incentivizing a very large um, community of developers, third-party developers. And that business is still growing at 30% CAGR. Very attractive business. What it's also done is it's de-risked the device or physical asset uh, business of Apple as well. Because it, Apple knows that as it introduces new devices, like wearable watches or smart uh, voice-activated interfaces, there is a developer community out there developing applications that will make those more attractive. And while the CAGR is quite low for physical devices, the margins are very, very high because Apple's core business is premium products, premium uh, technology products. But it is only successful because it has attracted a third-party network to create applications that work on these products. And in addition to that, it has invested heavily in intellectual capital, intellectual assets, in the form of music services and other software-based services here. And that part of the business is growing very fast as well. So Apple, as a company, its core business is premium devices. It makes a good margin on those but the portfolio includes activities which are based on relational capital and intellectual capital. And is the creating the synergies between that through a platform approach that has made it the most valuable company in the world today.